All right then, my friends. In this series, we're going to be looking at something called Spec Kit, which is a little bit of tooling that was recently released by GitHub. And I think the best way I could describe this bit of tooling is as an AI prompting framework for spec driven development, which integrates with various different coding agents. And by spec driven, I mean, when we're developing, we start with a clear high level specification of what we want to build, describing what it should be, what it should do without going into any technical implementation details. And from that spec, everything else can then be derived. A detailed technical plan on how it can be built and with what tools, then a list of actionable tasks that can be carried out to fulfill that plan, and then finally, the code itself. And at the heart of it all is that initial high level spec. So spec kit itself provides a bunch of pre-made prompts and scripts to help you follow this kind of workflow with the ultimate aim being that coding agents like Copilot or Claude Code or Codex or whatever else can produce better results. And this is something that you can implement into your workflow from day one on a brand new project or from within an existing project and new features. In my own experience playing around with this, I found it much more beneficial to work with existing projects or to scaffold the base project myself first and then use spec kit to add new features. So for that reason, this is the approach I'll be taking for this series. But again, that's just been my experience and it could be completely different for you. Either way, I've really enjoyed using spec kit because I've never been a fan of full on vibe coding. I think when you just let the AI go wild, it's way too easy for it to wander off, throw in random buggy code and everything ends up feeling just carelessly stitched together. When I'm using spec kit though, I feel like I'm much more in the loop. I can see exactly what the coding agents planning doing and there's less chance of it going off track. Anyway, let's get started by setting all of this up. So then the easiest way to get started with spec kit is to come to the spec kit repo, which I will leave a link to down below the video. And you want to copy this command right here. And to run this, you will need UV installed, which is a package manager for Python. The UVX command just runs a package without installing it a little bit like NPX for node packages. Anyway, to install UV, head to the astral docs where you'll see a bunch of easy install methods for both Mac and Windows. For Mac, you can use brew and for Windows, you can use Winget. So once you've installed that, you can run this command in the terminal and that's going to run the specify CLI tool to spin up a new spec kit project. You can also add on a bunch of different flags to this command, which we can see if we scroll down here a little bit. For example, we can use the AI flag to say what coding agent we want to use like Claude code or Copilot, etc. Another flag we can use is the here flag, which is what we'll be using to set spec kit up within an existing project folder, because by default, spec kit creates a new project folder to set things up in. If we use the here flag, we basically say, look, set it up here in this current project folder. Anyway, let's make sure we grab that command and then we can open a project in VS code to use this in. Okay, so this is a bare bones Next.js application, which I've already scaffolded using the create next app CLI, and it uses the app router and TypeScript. The only additional things I've done are strip out the global CSS, remove the public assets and remove most of the page content. So it really is just a blank next application. I've also committed those changes to my repo. So we're starting now with a clean working directory. Again, you can use spec kit to help scaffold the project to begin with. If you prefer, this is just the way I prefer to work and what I think currently works best for me when I'm using spec kit. So then now we can open a terminal in the project root and paste in that command we just grabbed. And then instead of supplying a new project name, which is what we do if we didn't already have a project ready, we're just going to use the here flag to say set up spec kit right here in this current project folder. Now, when we hit enter, it's going to run the spec kit CLI, where first of all, it tells us the current directory is not empty and it asks us if we want to continue. We're going to say yes and hit enter. Then we're going to choose what coding assistant we want to use with spec kit for this project. So we could choose Claude Code, Copilot, Gemini CLI, Curse, etc. And I think they are adding more to this list as well. So it might be that you see others when you run this. Anyway, we're going to select Copilot for this project. And next up, we choose the script type. And since I'm on Windows, I'm going to choose PowerShell. 
So then, when we hit enter, SpecKit's going to look at our selected options and then pull down a bunch of folders and files from GitHub based on those options and it's going to put them inside our project root. For example, if you chose Copilot as your coding agent like I did, then it's going to bring down a .github folder with some ready-made Copilot commands. And the other prompts and scripts it grabs are going to be geared towards Copilot as well. Okay then, so now we've got all these spec kit folders and files downloaded into the project. Let's just take a little look around them. So we've got the .github folder, which I just mentioned, and inside that we've got a bunch of different prompts prepared inside a prompts folder. Now, when we make prompt files like this inside a prompts folder, Copilot automatically makes these prompts available in the chat via slash commands, and the command name matches whatever the prompt file is called. For example, we can run the plan prompt by running the forward slash plan command in the chat. So all these prompts represent the different stages of the development cycle that we'll be going through with SpecKit. And we'll learn more about each one as we go forward. Next, we've got this new .specify folder, which contains three more subfolders. Memory, which is where a constitution file lives. And that file lays out the ground rules or the founding principles of the application. Scripts, which in my case, because I'm on Windows, contains a bunch of PowerShell scripts. And the prompt files we saw a moment ago instruct Copilot or whatever coding agent that you're using to occasionally run these scripts to do things like create new feature branches, uh, create new spec files, plan files, etc. We don't really need to touch these files unless you want to customize how SpecKit runs and works. And finally, we've got the templates folder, which contains a bunch of template files for the coding agent to use when it's fleshing out new specs or plans or tasks, etc. So again, we'll naturally talk more about these files as we go further into the series and we'll start using these different commands and prompts to make new features. For now, I'm just going to commit these new files to main directly because there's nothing much I could mess up at the moment. Now, before we start using SpecKit in the project, I just want to walk through what a typical development cycle might look like from a bird's eye view whenever we implement a new feature or spec. So we're going to start by using the forward slash constitution command to outline some core binding principles for the application as a whole. And that command then runs the constitution prompt, which instructs the coding agent to flesh out the constitution file with those principles. For example, if the application must focus on accessibility in UX, then we would have that outlined in the constitution file. Next up, we'll use the spec command to make a new high level specification for a feature. For example, implementing a dashboard page to show certain stats to a user. So this spec command would run the spec prompt and that prompt then instructs the coding agent to take our feature idea and turn it into a spec file. It also switches us to a new Git branch for the feature. Next, we use the plan command to run the plan prompt along with any technical preferences we have for the feature. For example, we might want to use Tailwind, a certain chart library to add charts, a flex layout, a shard CN for UI components like buttons, etc. So the plan prompt instructs the coding agent to take those technical preferences and implement a plan to make this new feature based on the spec. After that, we'll use the tasks command, which runs the tasks prompt. And that prompt tells the coding agent to take the entire technical plan and turn it into a logical list of actionable coding tasks, which can be run to make this new feature. And then finally, we'll run the implement command to fire off the implement prompt. And that instructs the coding agent to actually start making this new feature based on those tasks. So this is the part when Copilot or Claude Code or Codex or whatever else actually starts coding the feature and checking it against the tasks, the plan and the constitution, etc. So by the end of this cycle, we should have a new working feature all based on that initial spec. Then for any future features that you might want to add, we could walk through this entire process again, minus normally the first command, which for the most part, you don't need to run again, unless you ever want to add more governing principles, in which case you could rerun the command to add them. Otherwise, we could just cycle through these other four commands to add new features. On top of these commands, there's also a couple of optional ones that we can run along the way. There's the clarify command, which you might typically run after the specify one. 
And that has the coding agent look over the spec once it's been created and just clarify any underspecified areas with you. And it asks you questions to clarify those. Then there's the analyze command, which you might run after the tasks one. And this command basically analyzes the whole plan, spec, task list, and other artifacts to make sure they're all aligned and without any conflicting instructions. So we'll see both of those in action later as well. Also, I do want to mention that in my experience using SpecKit, the resulting documents or code that gets generated isn't always what I want it to be. And that's going to be the case whenever we're using AI to generate it for us, SpecKit or no SpecKit. That's just the way AI rolls, isn't it? It sometimes creates good code or sometimes creates messy code. So along the way, you should be checking the documents, the work, the code, and updating it as and when you need to. Anyway, now we've got SpecKit added to the project, let's start in the next lesson by making a constitution file. By the way, if you want early access to this entire course now, you can grab it all on the netninja.dev website. It's just $3 to buy, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month. Your first month is half price as well using this promo code. And for that, you get access to all of my courses, including this one. You get early access to all new courses as well, and you get access to my premium masterclass courses. So I will leave this link down below the video for those that are interested.